be a little taller here. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from uh, the first book of the Bible and the first page. We're reading from uh, Genesis 1 and then a verse from Genesis 2, and it can be found on page 1 of your pew Bible. So let us attend to God's word for us this morning. Reading from chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. And a verse from the second chapter, verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. This is the word of the Lord. Do please pray with me. Lord our God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all our hearts and our minds be acceptable in your sight, be pleasing to you. For you are our God, you are our rock, and you are our redeemer. Amen. So if, you, um, if, you're, if you're visiting today for the first time, first of all, welcome. It's great to have you here. Okay? And if you're not visiting, okay, if you are somebody who uh, is a member here or attends here often so that we have your address, okay, you received recently a packet in the mail, okay? a packet talking about stewardship. Because it's that season of the year where we're, where we're looking at stewardship. And the thing about stewardship, uh, particularly stewardship in the church, eh, is that our vision is too small. Eh? Oftentimes when people hear the word stewardship, what they think we're talking about is giving money to the church. And that that's, what, that's what stewardship is. It's giving money to church. Eh? And that is so small compared to what stewardship really is. If we want to understand what stewardship is about, one of the best places to begin is in the beginning. Okay? To look at the doctrine of, of creation. Okay? Even people who know virtually nothing about Christian or Jewish faith, who have never opened a Bible, know those first words of Scripture. In the beginning, God created. The recognition that it is God who creates and we are created is key to understanding who we are in relationship to God. It's key to understanding who we are meant to be. It's key to understanding stewardship. The psalm that we used in our our opening of worship this morning, Psalm 24, says, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who dwell in it. Yeah. It's that recognition that because God made it, it's his. Yeah. God made everything. Yeah. The stars, the planets, yeah. the earth, the mountains, the seas, the fish, the animals, you and me. He made it all and therefore it is his. It belongs to him. And that's, that's the foundational thing to remember about creation. God is creator and we are not. It belongs to God. 
and not to us. That is the lesson from from Genesis 1. But we also know what we read this morning, that that when God created humankind, he created us different from anything else in creation. Because God created us in God's own image. We're told that that God made uh, humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. We are created in the image of God and no other creature can say that. We are unique in that. And then we, we ask, well, what does it mean to be created in the image of God? And there are lots of things that that can mean. And pinning down exactly what being created in the image of God, what being image bearers means, is challenging. But one thing it means is that like the God who created us, we were made as, as sub-creators. We are creative creatures. We can, we can write poetry. We can make music. We tell stories. We can build buildings and craft art. We create in a way that no other part of creation does. We are creators, and that's part of being made in the image of God. And yet there's a difference. You see, that word where it says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, that word in Hebrew is used nowhere else than in the beginning of Genesis, and it means it, to make from nothing. Okay? To create de novo is the, the Latin term. Okay? God creates out of nothing. Okay? And we're not that. And it's something we need to remember, that, that we are co-creators with God, but we're not independent creators. There's an old joke about a a scientist who sometime in the near future goes up to God and says, God, you know, thanks, but but we don't need you anymore. We've got it all figured out. We understand physics and chemistry and biology. We can create whatever we want. We can make artificial intelligence and and machines. We can even create life now. We've got the genetics figured out. We understand the biochemistry. We can do this. We don't need you. And God says, oh, really? He says, you realize that that I created humankind from the dust of the earth. And the scientist says, we can do that now. We can take the dust of the earth and we can use that to make other molecules and stuff and we can can create genes and make life. And God says, oh, okay, show me. And the scientist looks around and he says, "Well, well, give me some dust. And I said, no, 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 you make your own dust. (laughs) You see, God creates from nothing. We we have to use what God has created in order to make other things. We are made as creators. And as part of that, we're also given a purpose. Unlike any other creature in all of creation, God placed human beings in the Garden of Eden and he told them to to work the garden and to take care of it. And that is stewardship. We, in our creativity, in our image-bearing capacity, we are made to tend creation, to work with creation and to, to take care of it. A steward, fundamentally, is somebody who is a caretaker for something that doesn't belong to them. Stewardship is about our taking care of this creation that doesn't belong to us. And that means every bit of this creation. We care for this world around us, and we, we work it, we use it creatively. When God placed us as caretakers, he put us to rule over creation. 
That doesn't mean that we, we misuse it. That doesn't mean we abuse the creation around us. Okay? That is not being a good steward. Okay? When, we, when we overfish you know, the, the lakes and the oceans, okay? when we pollute the world around us so that it, it can't sustain life, okay? when we use up so much of the water that comes from, from rivers that they no longer make it to the ocean anymore, that's not being a good steward. Okay? But we're also not meant to just keep our hands off. We're meant to work with creation. Okay? Make it produce, make it better. Okay? We do that in lots of ways. We take, we take from the earth ore, okay? and from that we, we get metal. Okay? We take, we take you know, lime and we make cement, and we build beautiful buildings. Okay? We take from the earth grass that was just there, right? And we use the creative abilities and the intelligence that God gave us to, to breed wheat. Okay? And from that wheat, we then grind it in a machine and we make bread. Right? That, is, that is being a good steward of creation, taking what God has given us and working it, making it something better, making it something beautiful, making it something good. That is how we are to be stewards, to, to use what God has entrusted to us in good ways. That's true of the, the creation around us, but it's also true of ourselves. Okay? God created you and me, right? And one of the mistakes we make is we forget that we are not our own, okay? that we belong to him. Okay? If this body that God has created were just mine, I could do with it as I please. But as a steward, I'm called to take care of it. My, my trying to you know, eat well and exercise and get enough sleep is not just about you know, wanting to feel good. It's about taking care of what's been entrusted to me, this body. We are meant to be good stewards of our health. We are meant to be good stewards of our relationships okay? as we look at our interactions with other, other people. Okay? Loving God and loving neighbor is part of stewardship. Right? Everything that God has entrusted to us, okay? if we use it well, that is, that is stewardship. Okay? And when we do that, okay, not only do we you know, make beautiful things, not only do we uh, improve on what's around us, okay, but we grow in our discipleship. Okay. I remember one of my first jobs, I, I worked in a butcher shop. Okay. And, um, you know, mostly I, you know, back, back then, I don't know if they still do, but, you know, things get, get kind of greasy and, and so you'd throw sawdust on the floor and then you had to sweep it up uh, to get the, you know, stuff off the floor so they didn't slip and kill yourself. Um, but, but my boss, Randy, who owned the shop, he, you know, that's how I started, was you know, sweeping up sawdust and, and getting rid of it. And then, and then gradually, he started entrusting me with more responsibilities. And I could work the, you know, work the cash register. Okay? And then, then he started leaving me alone there. Right? Um, you know, if he had to leave early, he would... He would let me tend the shop for the last hour or so it was open and then, and then do the cleanup and shut off the lights and leave. Okay. I was, was a steward of his store. Okay. And the more I did that well, the more he entrusted to me. Okay. The reality is sometimes I messed up. Okay. I remember one time coming in uh, you know, the next day and, and I'd been responsible for the evening before and Randy said, you know you left the lights on. Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Yeah. And the door was unlocked. <laughs> oh, you know. And I think I felt worse about that because I knew it wasn't my store okay, than I would have had it been mine. Okay. This belonged to somebody I cared about and trusted and respected and wanted to please. Okay. And so I tried harder to do well with it because it wasn't mine than I may have had it been mine. Right? And Randy being 
uh, an understanding boss said, you know, don't let it happen again. Mm -hmm. But he gave me another chance. That is our life of stewardship. Taking all this that is around us that doesn't belong to us and tending it well, being good caretakers who use it in good ways so that God is praised. That is the meaning of stewardship. But the other really amazing thing is what we read about in Romans this morning. We have been called to be caretakers of what doesn't belong to us, of what belongs to God. And yet, because of Jesus, we are also told that we are going to become heirs, that God adopts us as his children, so that what is now God's and we are responsible to be good caretakers of will eventually also be ours. As co-heirs with Christ, what we are caring for, we will inherit. And so we try to be good stewards because we want to grow in our faith. We try to be good stewards because we want to please the God who made us and and gave us this beautiful creation and and trusts us to deal with it well. And we want to be good stewards because eventually we will inherit what we have worked with. Stewardship begins with understanding that God is creator. We are created. And that all things, including us, all things are his. So let us care for them well. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.